We'll be popping into Chris's office in a second to discuss Saturday's game. Obviously, tomorrow's game at Potter's Bar and the last game of the season at Canvey before we head off to the Amex. Uh, we'll see what Chris has to say about Saturday's result. Disappointing and obviously other incidents that went on around it. The one positive thing about Saturday was we had the Hastings Music and Beer Festival here. Some slightly different activities. Apologies for those of you that couldn't hear the PA occasionally. We had to slightly change our arrangements because of those people being here but it was a one-off and it all worked out quite well in the end and of course we had the priceless sight of the kids having a kick about with the players after the match in the evening something they'll remember for a long time so credit to the players for that okay without further ado i'll um pop down the tunnel and go and catch up with chris and i'll see you in a minute see what he has to say cheers right yes we're here um with chris um as promised uh Firstly, I guess we have to yeah cover the game on Saturday. So a disappointing yeah. result, Chris, in the end, but loads of different things that went into that. Good first half performance mm. and a not as good second half performance, aside from all the stuff that went on around it. Yeah, I think the, the first half was probably a bit of an um, extension of what we've seen over the past sort of 10 days, two weeks, where we've... we've Played some very, very good football, like loads to like. Our approach play has been excellent. We've got the ball from Chaz into scoring positions, like with consistency, with, with good quality. I mean, some of the passages of play, especially when you watch it back, uh, that's, that's some great football. Um, so, yeah, I, I think pretty consistent with, as I said, what we've seen over the past couple of weeks, but also, um, disappointingly, consistent is uh, the final ball or, mm. or the finish, which was lacking. Um, yeah, I, I, it's um, it's obviously frustrating because you know there's an awful lot of good football being played, and perhaps we uh, we feel like we haven't necessarily uh, getting the reward, the rewards off the back of it. But um, equally, you know, do we deserve it? Probably not, because you've got to end up putting the ball in it. So that's mm -hmm. that's the whole point. So, uh, but it, it's really important that that when. Um, that when potentially the odd result um, or the outcome isn't quite what we'd like it to be, that we still analyse it um, as if we win the game and we still uh, pick out the positives. And there was plenty of those. So, um, as I said, first half, very, very good. Um, everything but score. And then second half, um, just stopped doing what we were doing uh, in the first half that got us into really good attacking position so um, but that that can often be the case with with young and experienced groups obviously you, you don't get the first goal or it's nil nil and you feel like um, you're missing chances and then you start to force things and chase the score line a little bit and before you know it you, you stop doing the things that ultimately got you into really good positions in the first half and that's what we've done we just showed a lack of maturity um, and you know, their, their three goals are all um, avoidable, aren't they? I mean, yeah. obviously Finn uh, Chapman, who I thought played very well. Um, you know, second second first team start. You know, loads to like again, um, similar to the Haringey game. Um, chose the right pass, but execution wasn't quite mm. right. Gets cut out and they score. You know, that can happen with with senior players, experienced players, let alone young players. So. You know that's that's part of the course uh, when you've got a young group, and then the second goal, the penalty. Yeah. Um, yeah, which which is which is um, which has happened at a real pivotal moment in the game. It's sort of you know we're building momentum again and starting to show signs of what we were doing in the first half in terms of controlling the game and getting into really good attacking positions and getting a bit more of a foothold in the game again. And then obviously a decision like that goes against you and it knocks the knocks the wind out of your sails and then obviously later in the game we get a goal disallowed for uh, not sure um, two of their players bumping into each yeah, other yeah <laughs> yeah so you know it's um you know, it's just sort of small margins and uh over the last 
last couple of weeks, you know, we fell on the wrong side of that. But you know, that, that, you know a lot of that or most of that we can control, um, which is ultimately being better with our end product, the final mm. ball, the finish, um, showing a bit more of a killer instinct, and the other stuff in terms of decisions. They're outside of our control, so you know, we, I'm sort of, uh, you know, you got to just take it on the chin. Yeah, I think um, one thing, yeah, the difference, the penalty aside, which did did kill us a little bit mm. psychologically as mm. well as the two nil gap. Um, that they, when we made small mistakes, they scored goals, mm. didn't they? And we had chances, like you say, that we didn't quite take. Having said that, Tommy Fag. You almost played without a real number nine on Saturday in some ways. And Tommy Fagg, two really good chances in those far post positions. One disallowed for offside. Mm. One very similar to the goal he scored at Hornchurch yeah. that he put over the bar this time yeah. by, by not much, actually. Mm. Um, Geordi still making runs. A couple of chances in the second half that he had. Mm. Um, and in fact, he scored the goal, didn't he, that mm. was um, disallowed. So... I get yeah. It's just that thing, that, that thing where you rested David. So mm. that was obviously just because of just being safe with his hamstring, I guess. Yeah, it's a, yeah. He's not one hundred percent fit at mm. all. Um, I mean, we were even debating whether or not to put him on in general um, because he's not one hundred percent fit, and obviously we've got more than one eye on the cup final. So, uh, but then equally, we're, we're still. I think if we win our next two games, we we you know we secure the joint highest league position the clubs had at step three so we're still obviously there's still a great deal of importance on the um, on the league games which has probably influenced us putting David on even though he wasn't 100 percent so um, which is a, which is a big loss um, but I, I thought Geordie done it right he plays the role a little bit differently to Dav um, mm. and part of that is you know some of his movements um, they tend to be a lot more away from the ball rather than towards the ball whereas Dav comes feet and then we make yeah. runs off of that so that's something that um, we need to work on that when we don't have Dav in the side uh, and we've got a different type of centre forward what that looks like around um, that player's position so you know does that mean that we get more runners into feet um, that, that'll, you know, that's just cohesion that'll come over time because um, as you can see with David obviously he's, he's been the, the, the centre forward for uh, my entire time here so and we've got used to when he does come feet we're very good at getting runs in behind and that, that was one of the things that I felt um, that we could have done better especially second half was um, we then had everyone running away from the ball um, and we didn't have enough variation with mm. our movement um, and again part of that was chasing the score line a little bit yeah um, when in reality, you know, for every run that way, we need movement feet um, because there was so many gaps for us to pick up the ball between lines, but we miss those opportunities and normally that would be Dav doing it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that's something to think about moving forwards um, and that, you know, is probably a, probably a factor in um, uh, not quite so slick second half. Yeah, that's and one thing, obviously, because of your changes with a view towards... The cup final, yeah. Ansu came in mm. and he played a deeper role, didn't yeah. he? So you've got Ansu and Adam, and then Kean, Tommy, yeah. um, Geordie, and we've got Finn and John operating up and down the flanks, I guess. But mm. it's that linking linking Ansu and Adam to the others, isn't it? Sometimes that, that, that looked like sometimes they looked like there was a bit of a gap there. Yeah, 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 that's been pointed out to them. Okay, yeah, yeah that's an issue. Um, and there's no excuse for that mm. because um, uh, we work on that religiously. Um, you know, again, it's, it's relatively early days. Some of the ideas and concepts that we're trying to introduce um, or have introduced to the group and we're trying to develop it, um, some will learn a lot quicker than others. So you saw it with Jack Bates when he was in the building he ultimately showed why he's a professional footballer. And he, he does that shuttling, doesn't well, he? He, he, yeah. he was able to, you know, they were new ideas to him, but he was able to grasp it very quickly. Mm. Um, and he, he was obviously a huge, huge factor in us um, winning the amount of games that we, we have and, and also like producing the level of performance we have. So, um, but, you know, like, like with every group, people learn at different 
uh, at different rates and the fact that Adam and Ansu did look detached is uh, is disappointing because um, you know, as I said it's something that we've covered an awful lot mm. um, but then equally against Hornchurch for example they both look very connected and their movement mm. to support was very good and uh, the timing of the runs to support the four passes was very good um, so it again goes back to what we said uh, a couple of weeks ago probably it's just consistency uh, it's been able to execute certain actions uh, consistently well uh, and if and ultimately if we'd done that we probably would have um, still been fighting for the playoffs now rather than watching Horsham and co compete for it yeah and uh, we, I mean well the thing you're, you're still working on those players and mm. working on who fits where aren't yeah, you yeah. and I got one thing I noticed on Saturday something I noticed when I'm doing the team sheets again nearly every single player from that Enfield team was in the programme and you know how there's such a churn in these clubs. Quite yeah. often I get a team sheet where only five of the players with mm. the programme. Yeah. Interesting, they had a very set team. They looked like a set team. They weren't particularly um, stupendous performers, mm. but it was a consistent, they knew their jobs, and that was probably one of the bigger differences. Yeah, that, I mean, ultimately, they, you know, we created more chances over the course of the game. We've had more gold mouth action. We've, um, you know, we've got into... A, better attacking positions more consistently over the course of the 96 minutes but ultimately they've they've been really ruthless with their mm. chances and you mm. know that's why that's why they are where they're at and why we are where we're at you know the, the challenge for us is as I said consistency um, but ultimately as well as I said we, we get the ball from Charlie into scoring positions consistently well with real good quality and you know the, the players deserve a lot of credit for that because as I said it's difficult out there um, and uh, as I said, some of the ideas that we that we um, we've introduced and we've tried to develop, they're, they're difficult. You know, it's challenging to do. Um, it's unfamiliar to a fair chunk of the group, and for us to have seen the progress we have, and for us to have produced like a Hornchurch level of performance and Chatham and etc. And you know, all of these really good performances, the players deserve a massive pat on the back for that. Mm. The challenge is, is is just consistency and also consistency in delivering what gets us from Charlie into scoring positions, but most importantly consistency in the finish. You know, we need we need to, you know, if our finishing and our end product matched the level of the rest of our performance uh, we'd be in the playoffs yeah. so you know that that's the challenge moving forwards and um, you know it's glaringly obvious I mean as I said we collect all the data um, we reflect on that and when we look at from back in Margate away at the end of October to now um, there has been a consistent theme that as I said we, we you know we have done well and we've We've got ourselves into a really good position. Um, obviously, the cup final, etc. But um, despite that, we have not been as ruthless as what yeah. we could have been um, in the opposition's penalty box. So that's a definite. That's what we've got to go after moving yeah. forwards. And so, yeah, two games still: Potter's Bar mm. and Canvey. Um, still got that long-term eye on the Amex, but six points up for grabs. How? What do you take from Saturday? into tomorrow and then on to on to next Saturday uh, well it's obviously a different game um, so Potter's Bar will do um, certain things different to Enfield uh, but there's also a lot of crossover in terms of the two teams there's quite a fair bit of similarity um, for us it's just you know we've got plan A we believe in plan A obviously there's variations within mm. that and tweaks um, looking at the opposition because what might have worked against Enfield, perhaps won't work at Potter's Bar, so that there'll be a degree of flexibility there. But ultimately, like we really believe in our plan A, it's it's got us to uh, a position where, as I said, we can we can you know get the highest at, you know joint highest ever finish at the level, which is really important for us from a from a from a team perspective in terms of you know the club's history. If we can achieve that, that's, that's nothing to be sniffed at. Um, and equally it's got us to a cup final so it's very much a case of do plan A better and if we do that then as we've already shown we, you know, we'll, we'll beat any team at this division and mm. as we've seen in the senior cup we'll beat teams in the league above so uh, again it, without sounding boring it comes down to that consistency and 
with the bolt on of putting the ball in the net, which which um, rewards all of the great approach play. Yeah, so fairly similar lineup, fairly similar squad. Uh, we've got a couple of injuries, so David's not not hundred percent. Uh, he's desperate to play, um, but he's we might have to put the reins on him a little yes. bit. Uh, Adam Love it uh, picked up a knock on Saturday, so I'd be surprised if he plays. Um, but then equally, you know, Jack Dixon will more than likely come back in. And, right. and yeah. as we've seen with Jack over the past um, few games, he's been excellent. Mm. And I think we actually missed him on Saturday. Yes. Um, you know, one of the reasons I felt that we did look detached from there to there, which is, you know, is, is a, it's the same observation I, was, I made when I was watching tra uh, the game back uh, Saturday evening and Sunday. Uh, one of the things that we did highlight was that the supporting movements from behind the ball weren't good enough and that was on Adam and um, Ansu and ultimately they should know better like I said with the amount that we've worked on it whereas Dicko has, has been very good at that of late so that's you know he'll, he'll more than likely come into the side um, yeah there's also um, potential to for Will Harley to get a start because um, he came in, he came in on Saturday under difficult circumstances. Yeah. It was a tough gig for him coming in, coming on when he did. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it, as I said, he, he caused carnage for the goal, mm. um, the disallowed goal. You know, he, he was he was in a great position to finish it. So, um, you know, Will's Will's done ever so well every time he's played. Um, from where he's come from, obviously, we found him in East Sussex football. Um, you know. I think he might have even been lower than step eight. Um, for him to have made the jump he has at such a young age is, is credit to him. Um, and the fact that part of me is quite enthusiastic about seeing him play tomorrow night is, mm. is probably a reflection of how well he's done. So Yeah, good. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, equally, with an eye on the senior cut, we need to make sure that Will, who's not cup tied, is is fit and ready to yeah. ready to play in that. So, um, yeah, it won't be the same starting lineup that we saw on Saturday, some of that will be forced, and some of that will be mm. just changes to try and um, pick the the best team to beat Potter's Bar. Yeah, and the back line looking similar because again, I mean, we've talked about him before, and he's got a chance of getting some games now. JJ, mm. who's probably my man of the match on Saturday. Yeah, well, Crut you know, Crutz is injured. Yeah. Um, so obviously, David, Adam, and Crutz are all um, not hundred percent. So. And, and Crutz has, as I said, been um, outstanding since he's come back to the club. Um, but that again presents an opportunity for JJ, and I, I'm with you. I thought he's very good. Yeah, um, yeah he, he plays with real authority, control, maturity. I mean, he's only just 19. Um, yeah, passing the ball out well. As yeah, well. He's, yeah. A, he's a very good footballer. As I said, mm. he, he could play. You know, we, we, we he could play centre midfield. We need to make a decision actually as a club in terms of where we mm. see him best fit. Um, because one thing is for sure is, again, without harping on about the lack of supporting movement from the holding midfield players on Saturday, one one thing is for sure is JJ only needs to be told something once or twice, and he and he grasps it. Um, and that's definitely something to think about in terms of longer term because he, he quite clearly play centre centre yeah. back and play it very well against a very very decent uh, Enfield forward line mm. so but he could equally he could play higher up the pitch and um, he certainly wouldn't let us down so it's um, yeah I, I thought he was very good um, when I looked at the goals as I said all the goals we conceded they're, they're not through Enfield carving us open it's us yeah. shooting ourselves in the foot to be honest so and, and you sort of try and pin a bit of responsibility on people and when you sort of review the game and ultimately JJ hasn't really put a foot wrong so I'm you know, excited to see him back out there again. Yeah and another big positive Dan and Tom on the bench so yeah. Dan back and yeah. and obviously Tom a bit of strapping on his knee but mm. looks looks pretty fit now. Yeah uh, Dan Hull got the all clear two weeks ago um, which is fantastic yes, news which yeah. we're delighted about um, and so we're trying to reintegrate him back into the back into the squad um, 
I mean, to be honest, he's trained like a beast the last two weeks, and part of me thought, just chuck him in, but mm. um, yeah, it probably wouldn't be the most sensible idea. We, we'd, we'd like to build his minutes up a little bit. Yeah. Um, um, and TC, TC could play now, but if we're just conscious of not making the same mistake again. We, we mm. you know, he, he came back from injury last time, played five games, was scored three goals, was absolutely flying, and then gets injured again. So. Um, we're going to try and build TC's minutes up ahead of the Senior Cup final um, because there's no doubt that uh, TC starts for us. Like, there's, yeah. you know, there's and he's someone. He's that player who changes games, isn't he? Uh, he's yeah. just a winner. Like he's yeah. used to. He's used to the expectation. I think we've said before through his academy journey, he was mm. he was part of an age group which consistently won uh, within the under 19s and then the under 21s part of a group that consistently won when he's broke through to the first team part of a group that's consistently won so he's used to the expectation so when I sit there and I talk about um, challenging for playoffs and getting to cup finals and promotion and stuff like that you can see some of the lads are a bit you know, not used to this whereas TC it's just like water off a duck's back he's, he's, he's used to it so if we can get him out there um at the business end of the season, that's 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 a massive positive. But again, what we don't want to do is take one step forward and ten back, and he gets injured again, and then mm. that potentially bleeds into next preseason. So yeah. you know, because he, he he needs another operation, um, and once once he has that, you're looking at sort of six weeks off. So you know he's he's going to have that operation right after the season. So he'll probably miss the first couple of weeks of preseason, but. Like I said, TC's uh, he starts for us. You know, I can't imagine a, a Hastings United team where I've got everyone fully fit where TC doesn't yeah. start in it. So, yeah, he's really important. Yeah, no, that's good. And the other big thing from the weekend: two thousand people here. Yeah. And um, you know, <laughs> like we talked about, you know, the players, how they react and mm. how they've got to react to that. Mm. You know, you you can see no matter what, when we start next season, mm. um, you know, there's the goodwill, the support from the town, the whole thing is there now to go on next yeah. season. If we leap ahead a little bit, it's all there, isn't it, mm. to go on? Yeah, I, that, yeah. It's, um, uh, as I said, to, I said a few times, I've said to the players before the game, I said our job is to match the supporters' consistency and how relentless they are mm. in our support. We've got to match that on the pitch and if we do that, we'll, we'll always be there or thereabouts. So, uh, they you know, like I've, I've said countless times, they're amazing. Uh, they are genuinely a 12th man, um, and you know, if if that type of support um, sort of weighs heavy on some of our players, then they're probably not right to be playing in a Hastings mm -hmm. United shirt. So, um, you know, they're they're superb, but then equally credit to credit to the players because they're they're playing a type of football that I think the supporters can get behind. Uh, more and more now I get comments where they're not Hastings United supporters but they're, they're Premier League teams playing away mm. and they want to watch a good game of football and you know the way that we play um, I think does attract the neutral and also I think you're starting to see a lot younger demographic coming through the gate as well mm. and that is a that is a generation which um, has been brought up on a certain type of football which I think you know, you know, we're quite, uh, you know, we're, we're producing that mm. at a different level. So, um, uh, credit to the players in terms of, as I said, making us competitive again, helping us climb the league table, getting us into the position we are, but also the, the type of football that that we've uh, that we've played. That's, as I said, got people through the gate. Yeah, no, it's nice. And the one thing I've noticed this year is they've developed, a lot of them have developed as people in the way that they deal with the fans. They yeah. get a lot more attention than they mm -hmm. used to get and they're responding to that really well. And that culminated in Saturday evening with a load of them having to kick about on the pitch with a load, with the kids and that, which, well, was, which be, was pretty cool, I yeah, thought. Yeah, to be honest, I nearly put a couple of seven-day approaches in for a couple <laughs> yeah, of the young people because they buried a couple. I of knew like, there were a couple of jokes there that wrote well, themselves. I, know, I, know, know. Yeah. I, I said to David, I said, are you right, Dave? You don't want to sort of show yourself up too much because yeah. he's better in front of gold than you. So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's brilliant. That's, but that, that's ultimately what, you know, that's Hastings United. If, if yeah. you could, I mean, if you could, 
you know, so what does what is Hastings United? That was a snapshot of, mm. you know, that one picture would sort of illustrate what what we're all about as a football club. Um, you know, seeing seeing our best players, um, players that have played professional football, uh, enjoying themselves in amongst the the supporters after. You know, after the game, three, four hours after kickoff, having a kick about. You know, that connection is so, is so powerful. Yeah, nice. um, and you know, they can feed into each other. As I said, that you know, that should add another ten uh, percent to each and every player on the football pitch. Sure. And e- equally, that energizes the the supporters in terms of seeing a improved level of performance. So, you know, even in the, I mean. <laughs> Even in the, the the pilot bar at sort of twenty past nine at night, you've got Finn Chapman, mm. Dan Hull, um, Kier Moynes, uh, Freddie Leg. These guys doing the Congo with a load of supporters, <laughs> being led by Kev Towner. Yeah, you know what I mean, it's just brilliant. You yeah, just yeah. think, you know, yeah. that that is, you know, that is success. And for us to have, you know, when when we walked in at the end of October, there was a feeling that there was a little bit of a disconnect. And mm. to see that, you go, well. You know, obviously you're frustrated because you know I'm a winner, mm. and you know you, you want to get out of this league. You know, yeah. you, like I look at what we've produced, and you think, yeah, like we, we can compete um, at the top end of this league. And if we get into the, if you know, if we got into the playoffs, I don't think anyone would want to play us. Mm. Um, so you know, all of that frustration of falling short, albeit we've still got so much to play for. Mm. Um, it's sort of put into perspective when you see the supporters and the, and the players and and how together they are. It's a powerful thing. So, yeah, it was it was, um, it was a, um, plenty of nice moments. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't all bad, was it? No, it wasn't no. All bad, no. Either. But even Saturday, like, as I said, Saturday, like the first, we played some great football yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Like we, you know, and, and over the past, it's a, it's amazing because it, it sort of levels itself out a bit. So the first four games that we won all four, we weren't very good. Mm. Whereas the last four games, we've been very good. And we haven't, mm, yeah. you know, we haven't won all four, and it's sort of you just realise that actually it's, it's sometimes you know it's just it's just the way it goes, and you've got to take it on the chin and um, just try to learn from it and move forwards. But there's so much to like, um, and I think that's probably what makes it more frustrating because when we're good, oh yeah, yeah. we are very good, mm. and you know like every, every game and even Gav, um, the Enfield manager, is like, you guys are a big problem mm. like, after the game. So you know every every team we seem to play is full of praise. So uh, after the game, so you know we've got as I said we've got to, you know acknowledge that, but realise where we've fell short and then build on that to make sure it doesn't happen again. Yeah, right. So a nice another fun little trip tomorrow. So yeah. up to Potter's Bar, and yeah. then I'm sure Saturday will be a nice. Um, well, it should be a good day out at Canvey. Should be quite yeah. a few people there. Going to be a bit of a end of season knees up, I'm mm. sure, for the travelling fans. Yeah. And then off to the Amex. Mm. And one thing I would say is that the club are laying on coaches now. So a lot of you will have seen this. If you haven't, there is information on all the usual channels about coaches that are going. So if you don't want to drive or if you don't want to go by train, there are coaches now. So do look out for that on all the on all the usual Facebook, Twitter, those sort of things, the information's out there. So hopefully, yeah, big crowd at the MX. Mm. And in the meantime, two good games to go. Yeah, I th- yes, we're looking forward to uh, playing away from home, if I'm being mm. honest. Um, the players definitely are. Yeah. You know, Jack Dixon come up with the best line ever to sum up the pitch. He said, it's like playing football with a rugby ball. <laughs> and I thought, yes, yeah, that's, that's a great way to sort of sum it up. So we're, you know, we're looking forward to well, actually like Potter's Bar is apparently a notoriously difficult surface, but I've looked at it and it looks all right to me. So you know, mm. we're you know, it'd be like Wembley. It's all relative. Yeah, it? no, we can't wait. You know, it'd be an improvement. So um, yeah, we're looking forward to Potter's Bar and Canvey. Um, as I said, we, you know, if we if we win those two games, we've, you know, as I said, we've we've. We've matched that joint highest league position, which, as I said, you know, when you fall short of the playoffs, to still have something within the league to sort of cling on to and, and attack um, beyond the sort of three points is massive. So, um, you know, we look forward to that. Um, we certainly won't be taking our foot off the gas. It certainly won't be an end of season feel from our perspective. That that will not be allowed to happen. So, even if we were mid-table and uh, there was no sort of 
club record to attack that it would not be an end of season still want to finish no, strong no, no, yeah, definitely um, mm. and then obviously a senior cup which is great and I'm quite looking forward to having uh, sort of 10 days nearly two weeks to prepare to for prepare. that as well it should be great so and obviously Horsham were in the playoffs pretty much in there so um, yeah you know there's, there's no there's no doubt that we'll have an advantage going into that game because I'll be surprised if Horsham don't get to the playoff final mm. to be honest with with mm. the resources and the quality and the experience they've got at their disposal you know it'd be a real surprise if they didn't get to the playoff final mm. um uh, I think they've had a load of injuries, but you look at the side they can still put out. It's, oh, yes. yeah, it's very yeah. impressive. So, as I said, I'll be surprised if they don't get to the final, and I'm sure they'll be disappointed if they didn't get to the playoff final. But that, you know, that is an advantage for us because it's two days before the game. So we've got we've got two good weeks to prepare for it, and we will diligently. Brilliant. Okay. Right. A few of them in for training this yeah, evening. Definitely. Yeah. And then, as we said, Potter's Bar tomorrow. So mm. we'll see you there. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah, good luck with that. And, well, on we go, eh? Great, Andy, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> Cheers. You.